Hello, so this is going to be a video regarding CBRN fret levels or NBC fret levels, uh, obviously being in chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. And the idea of this video is kind of to look at the various levels of CBRN frets and rank them kind of from least dangerous to most dangerous. Now, obviously, in one video, I cannot go over every single type of chemical, biological risk, and sort of radiation or nuclear risk. So it's just going to be a more of a generalised thing. So, in terms of chemicals, I'd start off with much lower risk things like accidental mixing of um, sort of chemicals that can release dangerous gases. And in this regard, you know, they're only a danger to people in the immediate area of them, either non-fatal but causing sort of coughing and tears and things like that, um, or things like phosgene, which are obviously more fatal, but if they're contained to a smaller area, it's only going to be dangerous to the people immediately where it is. So, as I sort of go through the list, it's kind of looking more like, you know, global annihilation type of degree of things compared to, you know, a very small threat to people in a small area. So, um, as I've said before in other videos, accidental mixing of chemicals can still be obviously dangerous to people, um, but not in the degree of um, worldwide apocalypse kind of a level, if you want to call it that. Um, so then, I think this is where you're going to have now sort of higher levels of chemical stuff, like chemical fires and things like that, where a chemical plant could set on fire or something like that, and this is still a chemical risk, um, but, you know, this is something that would affect potentially hundreds or thousands of people in an area. Um, so where you have a big chemical spill, obviously, <clears throat> on an industrial scale, that's going to affect a lot more people. Now, it depends how populated the area is. Obviously, the more rural it happens, the less damage it will do. It could still do a lot of environmental damage, but um, you've got to think about sort of population centres and how close something like this happens to them. So, a big chemical fire, you know, a factory burning or a train derailing carrying chemicals, something like that, that would be a much bigger threat, in my opinion, than just chemicals that somebody's mixed together by accident um, in some sort of cleaning position. Um, causing a problem. So you've got those two. Then what I would think you'd have next is radiation sort of risks. Um, so what I mean by this is not, I'd say something like Chernobyl is actually still on a bigger scale than this, but any kind of nuclear waste leak or something like that where unlike a lot of the chemicals, radiation itself is going to stick around for far far longer unfortunately. Um, I'm sure you know that with lots of these sort of radiation leaks, like with Chernobyl, they've had as basically areas that are going to be contaminated for thousands of years. You know, not not decades, not hundreds of years, but literally thousands of years where it will be unfit for life. So, obviously, radiological risks um, are much higher <clears throat> in that regard. So this is where you're looking from anything like a small, very small scale kind of radiation leak from a power plant or somewhere else up to the kind of Chernobyl or Fukushima type degrees of it. So this is where you're getting, you know, to the pretty serious thing where it could cost, you know, lots of people their lives in an immediate thing from acute radiation syndrome up to, uh, you know, radiation poisoning, up to people who have cancers and things a lot further down the line and genetic problems. Um, the other big problem is the sort of fallout of radiation type problems like this can be very, very widespread. So it could happen in one country and the wind could, you know, take all the um, irradiated particles all over the world, basically. So uh, you can see that in regards to some of the US nuclear tests in Nevada uh, during the Cold War. The, often the radiation wasn't the highest in Nevada apart from ground zero of a lot of these tests. But lots and lots of other states, um, you know, even in the sort of um, north mid areas of the US, um, if you think of sort of where Wyoming is and things like that, and even sort of, I guess, to where the south area of Canada is, uh, they had lots of this radiation just sort of go up that sort of area. So, um, you know, there's a lot of radiation threats in areas where you wouldn't expect it in that sort of regard. Okay, and now we have our sort of nuclear war and biological threats. Now, these could be higher than each other depending on what it is, but I'd say low-level biological uh, threats would be next, and that's because a major disease, especially if it's a biological weapon, could kill pretty much everybody on the planet. However, if it's a less serious one, you know, it might kill people in an individual contaminated area. Now, we're also going to have to bring in, like, the more dangerous chemical weapons, like nerve agents in now as well, because they're all sort of 
you know, doing this with each other. Well, I think in many ways nerve agents are the least dangerous because while something like a gram of VX could kill 500 to 1,000 people through skin contact alone, it's never going to be so evenly dispersed that it's going to do that. So what would end up happening is a few people, or those at the closest area, maybe hundreds, would be exposed to very high levels of it. But people further away, for example, might not be exposed at all. And obviously filtration systems and everything can deal very well with things like nerve agents. Um, whereas if you consider some of the threats, um, you know, that's not going to be the case. Biological, I think, is more dangerous because it spreads on its own, if it's something that can jump from human to human or animal to animal. Um, whereas something like a chemical weapon, obviously, apart from maybe people having contaminated clothing and taking it elsewhere by accident, it's only going to be really affecting the area where it immediately hits. So I'd say chemical weapons probably top off with nerve agents, um, but they're still less serious than some of the more serious biological weapons. During the Cold War, I think it was the Soviets who designed some biological weapons that were pretty much world-ending, and then they destroyed them just simply because they were so worried about what if it got out by accident, or if it was used, you know, it would be the end of everything. Um, so I'd say biological weapons are really up there in terms of wiping out everything, but I still think they'd be less serious than the full-scale nuclear exchange. Now, I did a vi uh, video a while ago on why nuclear weapons are so scary and to an extent, and that's probably worth watching if you want to know obviously more about nuclear weapons in detail. But with nuclear weapons, you have obviously the outright destructiveness of a nuclear exchange. Then you have all the fallout, as we said before, of radiological risks. And then um, you've also obviously got the prospect of a nuclear winter, if you believe that would happen. Now, there are various sort of arguments as scientists whether or not a nuclear winter would happen. And I do not have the expertise to tell you if it would or wouldn't. I personally believe that you would risk a nuclear winter if you had a massive exchange because it would be similar to an asteroid hitting the Earth or something else of how much is thrown into the air, causing air pollution, you know, lowering the temperature of the Earth by a few degrees, if not more, causing crops to fail, um, and everything else. And obviously, with a nuclear war, you have to understand that you first had the massive exchange, um, where all the superpowers throw their nukes at each other, and this could be anything from kilotons to megatons, depending on the warheads or bombs. So you've had lots of people initially wiped out by the actual nuclear exchange itself. Then you've got all the radiation threats, which are going to slowly be, um, you know, killing off lots of things uh, over generations, like fertility rates going further and further down due to um, damage to genetic structures, people not living as long due to all the cancers and horrible diseases they get. And then obviously you've got the prospect of things like nuclear winter, which cause mass famines at the same time. So I would think um, the most big, the biggest threat to the Earth probably is a nuclear exchange. But it is still right up there with some of the biological things, because if you know some of these biological weapons actually exist that are rumoured to, um, and they got out, you know, it could be pretty much the end of everything for that reason. But, you know, it's, it's hard to judge when you get to this theoretical level of um, mutually assured destruction, in a sense, what would be, you know, the worst possible thing, they'd all be pretty bad. So if we go back to the beginning, you've got at the beginning things like, you know, accidental chemical mixing, um, not proper handling of chemicals, maybe a risk to people in a very small area exposed to them, but that's it. Then obviously you're jumping up to um, some of your like radiation leaks from actual sort of nuclear plants and things like that to various degrees. Then you've got obviously chemical weapons, the high end of them, like nerve agents, as well as biological weapons or plagues kind of thing. For example, if H7N9 ends up being as dangerous as it might potentially be, that could be right up there. Um, sort of, you know, at the low end of biological weapons, it's bordering on the high end of biological weapons, and then you've got this kind of very balanced thing between high end of biological weapons and a full-on nuclear exchange. Now, it's considered even with a nuclear exchange that if India and Pakistan through nukes at each other, and it was limited to the nukes only hitting those two areas, that that would still lower the Earth's temperature by a few degrees due to all the pollution thrown up, and, you know, the radiation cloud could pretty much head anywhere, hitting people not even in those regions at all. So even a small-scale nuclear exchange between two small nuclear powers would be very bad. Um, you know, and that's when we're not even talking about mutually assured destruction of Russia, China, um, 
and America all throwing nuclear weapons at each other with France and Britain thrown in for good measure. So, there you go, that's my um, thoughts on how I'd personally rank CBRN threat levels. Of course, there'll be things that will be outliers on anything like this. Um, you know, where there might be a big disease that doesn't affect as many people as they thought, or something, you know, that comes along that's a lot worse than predicted. But I think that's how I personally rank it. Hopefully you found this sort of video interesting. Um, but again, I'm not a scientist or anything, so I can't really as accurately as them say, you know, how these things should be definitely ranked.